Now, unfortunately, you do need your left hand to play this piece as well. It's not just a right hand piece. And, and in a lot of ways, even though this is a, a piece really for you know arpeggios, PIMA, the left hand is the hard part, at least for me. So a couple things to, to talk about here. Um, one is you need to make sure you know what the chords are for each for each uh, for each beat. So even though you're playing this arpeggio, one thing I like to do is go through and practice block chords. So I, I take the arpeggio away and I just play chords. piece like that but you get the idea so I can go through and play each chord and it's really important that it be legato and if you don't know the term legato it's it's the the musical term uh, for connected so with as little space in between as possible so as I play one chord and move to the next I really want to make sure there's there's not this going on That's not legato. Uh, so make sure it's nice and connected, and then you will have worked out you know, a lot of the issues with your, your left hand there. Um, and another thing I might mention here is uh, it's helpful to know the names of the chords. You know, a lot of jazz guitarists and, and, and other types of uh, you know, guitar players, other than classical, are, are very good at this. Um, but a lot of classical, it's not true for everybody, but you know, more, more than probably should be the case. I talk to classical players and I, I ask them or students, you know, you know, well, what about, you know, the chord in this measure? What is that? Or, you know, start on, you know, this chord. What do you mean? Oh, you mean that one. And then they just put down a hand shape. Well, knowing the shapes is, is half of it, but I, I think it's really useful to know the names of the chords as well. So um, to know a little bit of music theory is 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 very useful here if these chord shapes have names they're easier to remember okay a couple of uh a couple little spots here there are just two that i want to you know really look at here and um and then that'll be that'll be that in measure eight actually it's measure seven going into measure eight you've got this really nasty little uh little left hand thing going on here i'll, I'll do it slow <laughs> Okay, so you see what's going on there. That's that's really hard. You're moving from this chord here to this chord here, and then back, and it has to happen really, really smooth. All right, that's not easy to do. Here's a little trick that'll save you. Once you've worked out playing the block chords, then you can make it a little bit easier by only putting the fingers down that you need. And here's what I mean by that. So I put down one, three, and four. That's a little, you know, D sharp, A, B, F sharp. There. And then I'm moving to this chord here, which is basically the same thing, but with an F sharp in the bottom here. And I, I only put them down one at a time. So if you watch my left hand, so I just get that one down, and then I put that down when I need it, and that one down when I need it. So I don't try to put the whole chord down at once. I just put them down as I need them and it makes it a little bit easier to do there. So, go through really slowly. And it'll help smooth out uh, the, the little left hand issue there. The other spot, there's just one more spot here uh, that's really tough. Uh, this, is, this is later, this is in line four, measures two and three of line four, where we have this little F major chord here block chords are. Okay, that's not too hard right there. Um, so you've just got that little half bar here holding down uh, one and two. But here's the tough part. Now you have to get down and play that full bar with that low F in the bass and then get back to the half bar. So again, you know, just go through practice block chords. Now, to give a, a little uh, a little nod to, to my friend Scott Tennant um, and his book Pumping Nylon, he's got some great exercises in there uh, called fixed finger exercises in the daily warm up that uh, have made many a guitar student, including myself, cry, um, where you have to hold down some fingers and then 
one finger, they get really tough and you move into two here, have to move. Um, you know, and I, I force my students at uh, the university to, to do those. And, you know, sometimes I get, you know, what, do I, what am I going to use this for? I don't, I don't play a piece where I have to do that. And sure you do. Here's an example. If you watch my first finger. See? So these fingers were down. First finger had to relax and move very quickly and then move back. So uh, that's a sort of real life example of how those little exercises can, can, can make your life a little bit easier rather than harder if you think about it like that. So I go through slowly. Down to the full bar. Back quickly. And then that's that. So again, go through first, see if you can play block chords, and then just move through slowly and really analyze and choreograph your fingers. Um, I guess if there's a theme here for, for the left hand, it's don't wing it. Make sure you understand exactly what each finger needs to do. Make sure you know exactly where each finger needs to be. Make sure it's the right finger for the job based on uh, positioning and availability and then just go slowly and be patient and hopefully it'll get easier. Okay, well, I hope you've uh, gotten something out of this and I look forward to hearing from you and we'll see you next time.